Welcome to part five of our video series. We'll continue our review of the PCI Express Gen 5 specification based IBIS AMI models. My name is Todd Berman Solo, and I'm an application engineer here at Keysight and the Design Engineer Software Services Group. In the previous video, we showed native system view results and compared them to IBIS AMI results in ADS. They showed excellent agreement and gave us confidence in our IBIS AMI generation process. In this video segment, we'll focus on IBIS AMI results in ADS, mainly with regards to behavior over different channel lengths and verifying the receiver CTLE adaptation feature. Let's begin. So we want to understand the IBIS AMI bit error rate performance versus channel variation. The ADS schematics and setup is shown here. A 480K simulation sweep was put together to find optimal transmit EQ and receiver CTLE settings and to verify the receiver CTLE adaptation can find those optimal uh, settings automatically. So let's start with taking a look at the bit error rate performance for each channel at their optimal EQ settings. Short channel at minus 12 dB, as expected, has a good eye opening. The table at the lower right provides a summary of DC gain values and DFE taps. Tables on the top and the eye contour eye mask graph report resulting eye height and eye width. Uh, we observe the adapted DC gain value of minus five, which makes sense since uh, at short channel, little equalization is needed. Moving to medium channel, minus 24 dB, we see the eye getting smaller, but still healthy results. DC gain um, has in increased to minus eight, so we can see the CTLE is working a bit harder with more channel loss. Finally, at long channel, minus 36 dB, we see the eye closure just outside uh, the PCI Express Gen 5 eye mask. A DC gain is much stronger at minus 13, and the eye height at minus, or at uh, 19 millivolts which is uh, well above the uh, 15 millivolt pass-fail limit. Uh, these lost channels have been relatively reflection-free, but for the final channel case, um, we have a minus 36 dB insertion loss with more reflections present. You can observe roughly the same minus 36 dB insertion loss at 16 gigahertz, uh, but the high frequency roll off is steeper and there's some non-monotonicity uh, in the loss curve, uh, which represents the increased return loss. Uh, the CTLE value is actually weaker in this case with a DC gain of uh, minus 10, but uh, a Gen 5 passing uh, eye opening of 16 millivolts uh, and 13.5 picoseconds. Next, let's take a closer look at the CTLE adaptation feature. The 480K sweep varied the parameters listed here. Uh, for static mode testing, we were looking at 10 transmit precepts swept across 11 CTLE DC gain settings across four channels, which results in 440 cases total. For testing at adaptive uh, CTLE mode, uh, we only need to sweep the 10 transmit presets across the four channels, so now only 40 cases. So it's 440 cases versus 40 cases. The adaptive CTLA feature will reduce the number of simulations uh, required uh, by a factor of 10 by not having to sweep all 11 CTLE settings. Um, so let's take a closer look at the results of all 480 simulations to see if the receiver CTLE feature is working as expected. The data is summarized on the table to the left. The channel and the transmitter preset uh, settings are the rows with the eye height, eye width, and DC gain measurements in the columns. The values on the left are the optimal values found from the 440k static setting sweeps, where the values on the right are found from the 40k adaptive uh, setting sweep. The rows highlighted in green represent the best setting for each channel. For those values highlighted in green, you can quickly notice strong agreement between the optimal and adapted values. 
Let's return to this data in a moment. First, a brief overview of the adaptation approach, and then we'll look at this data in graph form. Uh, a general overview is provided in this block diagram. Uh, the receiver takes the incoming uh, channel plus transmitter impulse response and generates a pulse response. That result is combined with uh, each of the 11 CTLE curves to select the optimal DC gain setting for, uh, to use for the simulation. What's considered optimal is the strongest equalization setting without over-equalizing the pulse response. That way, the DFE should have an open eye at, as its input and can perform finer adjustments for the final waveform output. Uh, now let's, uh, let's go back to the data results. Looking at eye height metric, uh, in this graph, the x-axis is channel followed by TX presets 0 through 9. The blue results are the optimal results found by static value sweeping. The orange are the results of CTLE adaptation. The green circle highlights the overall best transmit uh, preset used for the channel. In all the four channels, the CTLA adaptation finds the optimal setting with regards to eye height. In summary, this data shows the CTLA adaptation finds the optimal TX preset based on eye height in all the four channel cases uh, tested. The table has green lines to highlight the overall best setting for each channel with the corresponding eye height, eye width, and DC gain. Another data point to note is this batch simulation provides some good data on model speed. For the 480 case simulation, it took 6 hours and 40 minutes to run on a single laptop computer. That comes out to be 50 seconds per case. There's no speed requirement that I'm aware of, but from a practical sense, the faster the model can uh, be, then the more solution space the end user is enabled to explore with these models, which is a key benefit of the IBIS AMI modeling. Compiled C++ executables will run fast. So this concludes part five. Please join me for the next video, and we'll continue to explore these PCI Express Gen 5 IBIS AMI models. Thanks.